Welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs with General Disturbance. This is the E25. It's the tier 7 German premium tank destroyer, otherwise known as a cockroach. This one is located on the south spawn of Live Oaks under the command of Beerwaller. Well, this replay is from a few weeks ago. In fact, actually, I'm very sorry to Beerwaller that delayed it so long. But that was mainly down to the fact that we were having to uh, cope with so many replays coming in at the same time. Now, Beer Waller's armed, uh, well, you can see with a 75mm gun, capable of 135 alpha, penetrating 150mm with standard ammo, and with the premium ammo, he can go through 194mm. You can see he's loaded a fair amount of both. When his first shot gets the penetration on the C-52 for 138, which is a high roll. Oh, you hear them in the tracks with that one, so... Well, it's not much of his rear showing, and he is hitting him in the tracks, but he didn't get any penetrating shots there. Ah! Finally got him! So he's got his first kill of the game. Now, you can see from the markings on Beer Waller's E25 that he's had a lot of ace tankers in this vehicle, and a lot of high calibers, too. And, uh, yes, so this replay um, is... As he said, a must watch, uh, especially around the end. Do watch it near the end because it's very important. Whoa, that's Artie. Well, Artie blind firing the bushes means that more than likely he's going to try again. But he didn't get any luck from that bush. And so Beerwall has decided to pull back because he doesn't really want to get hit by a, a blind shot. Now, the enemy Artie in this game is a GW Panther and a Hummel. It could have been either one of them that actually fired that shot in. He's now trying to blind fire near the uh, the lookout spot, which is that little bunker. It's not a bunker, actually. It's a house, but uh, he was trying blind firing. You don't get a lot of ammunition in this uh, little tank destroyer. Only 60. And remember, it's part of the Entwicklung series. That's why it's got the E in front of the number. And it was supposed to be the replacement for the Hetzer. In fact, it was supposed to be a um, uh, a tank destroyer and uh, a reconnaissance vehicle. Okay, it was designed by the Argus Company. They built five, apparently, at Alket, but according to the other data, it says no pre prototypes. So it's kind of odd, really. We've got conflicting information there. It's got excellent mobility, top speed 65 kilometers now, which is, and you notice he's blind firing. Now he's spotted the Excalibur and he'll go to work on this guy. He hit him in the tracks. Second shot hits the body. Didn't get the kill, but he did do a lot of damage. And now we've got problems. We've got enemy tanks coming and they're close to the bridge. Now if he fires, he might get spotted. And he gets one round into the T29. Second one hit the tracks. Got that one in, low roll. Oh, he's tracked him. So he might get damage assist now. He's tearing this guy to shreds. I don't think the T-29 can see him. And now he never will. Okay, Thunderbolt. Remember, thick armor on the front. We have been spotted. And he pulls back, does still get hits. I'm not sure the Thunderbolt... Oh, it was the AMX-12 ton that saw him and he got two rounds in. Remember, that's a four-shot autoloader, so he needs to get into cover. That's a bit of weaving. Okay, so he's lost 300 or nearly 270 hit points. Thunderbolt's down to a one-shot. Can he get a shot in this guy just before he gets into cover? Just about make him out. First shot doesn't pen. That does. So he's got his third kill of the game. Ow, that AMX must have reloaded. He's weaving to avoid that 75mm gun. Trying to remember, is the AMX 12 ton a 75? I think it is a 75mm rather than 76. But uh, let's have a look. Well, he's gone into the bushes, so he's nicely well hidden now. And he's pulling out, even with his rear end poking out. Now firing rounds into the T-43 at range. He's going back into the houses. 
Okay, the super chap, he's getting close. He's just the other side of that ridge line, but he can't see us at the moment. Scores are even. So it's still anyone's battle. Super Chappy is getting close. He's not a one shot. But he's close to a one shot. He pulls back to use the push mechanic. And yes, he did get the kill. So four kills now. Enemy RT landed behind us. So RT was responding. They are focusing on this area. Both bar R2 in the bushes. Okay, what have we got there? That's the guy's a one shot. It's the Hellcat. You get a shot? No, that shot didn't hit. Oh, now we've got trouble. The Amex 12 ton who's been hitting us. And that Panther is an AFK. Okay, the, luckily, the Amex 12 ton was taken out by our Amex 13 F3 AM. So he must be fairly good at shotgun at close range shooting. So we don't have to worry about that guy. But the Hellcat is still fairly close. He must be in the lake area. And he's being suppressed at the moment by that M4A1 FL10. And he's spotting for the enemy RT. Both enemy RTs are firing at our Basotto and M4A1 FL10. Ideally, we want to get rid of that Hellcat if we can. Yes, there he is. And he's seen that, but he couldn't get a shot from where he was. He's pulling around. He's going to have to go down the lower part of the lakes. Now he got a shot from the guy. It's a T-43, actually. Hellcat's gone down. The Hellcat was taken out by the AMX-13 F3 AM again. So, good arty player. That guy's got two kills, by the way. Only, only two kills, but he obviously reacted well. Oh, no, we lost the M4A1 FL-10. Which now means we've got worries because that uh, T-43, and yes, we would drown if we stayed at this level. That T-43 is going to be making its way towards the AFK Yank Panther. Remember, he is an AFK. There's the Super Hellcat. First shot penetrates. This fast fire rate is really good. Standard reload time, 2.88 seconds. You can see that... Uh, Beer Wallet's got it down to 2.25. Don't stay in the water too long. And Artie's firing at us from a very odd angle, and he managed to miss us. But we did get... Uh, oh, both of them managed to miss us. So it looks like they're following what the Super Hellcat did, and the, the Yag Panther came alive. But unfortunately... Well, the Yag Panther managed to kill the Super Hellcat, but he gets wiped out by the T-43. And now we've just got this T-43. It's only us and the RT left alive. On the enemy team, they've got two medium tanks and the RT. So he's decided instead of going after the enemy RT, which I think he was tempted to do, he's now going to return and try and take out that T-43 and then the BK-3002D. Now remember, that's the D version. That's the version that can have the 88mm gun. In fact, more than likely it does have the 88mm turn. Oh, he got behind us. I don't know how he did it, but he did get behind us. And now we've got the two last enemy mediums. Oh, he fluffed that one. He's, he's too close. He's just too close. And that ridge line's really throwing him off. You don't get much gun depression, only 8 degrees on the E25. Now, most people would say, oh, that's enough. But under these circumstances where you've got more, the ridge line is getting in the way. So he's going to try and outflank the guy by getting around him. There he is. Nope, missed with the first one. Get it in second. Gets his shot in. Artie's firing. He moves out the way. Guns get stunned. The enemy RT did get a shot. We lost both RTs, so he's all alone now against that VK and the two enemy RTs. They're both trying to get him. They will have lost him now. They won't know it. I think that last shot was a guess shot. He fired where he thought he might be, and he was nearly correct. But I'm pretty sure now Beer Waller can go out and wipe out the enemy RT. And then he can set up an ambush for the VK. The Hummel knows that he's in danger. He's on the move. Okay. Wait for him to appear at the end of the station. We've only got nine rounds left. 
Don't make them count. That's where I was a bit concerned about him blind firing at the start of the map. The Hummel knows he's been seen. In fact, he's stuck behind cover and he's not come out. And the VK is now capping at the other end. Now, there is enough time for him to get rid of the Zarty. Beer Wallace decided he could try and outflank the enemy. Get round behind the RT. I'm also wondering if he thinks that the GW Panthers already moved. There they are. They're both on the move. First shot. Didn't, oh, we got him in the hit, but he didn't kill him. The GW fired on the move. He's gone. Hummel gets hit. One shot to kill. And he gets him, so he's killed both party. That's the Pascucci's. But now he's got to get back to the, the cap as quickly as he can. Use the bridges. Don't go into the dips. Oh, he's going into the dip. Now, admittedly, he is going on the easy side, which is the um, going down um, on the side that's more most likely to see the enemy vehicle in the cap. But no, actually, you're much better off going straight across the bridge. Still got 30 seconds left. He's not going to be able to spot the guy. He's going to have to get close. Oh, this is going to be a time-related one. Ten seconds. He's going to have to go straight in and try and get a reset. The VK has been damaged. There he is. And he was ready. Oh, my God. Who won? He lost. Well, that was an A for effort by Beerwallet in the E25. He lost the game because the VK had actually capped out by the time that he managed to bear his gun onto the guy. But look at this. He got an ace tanker out of that game. Well, as you'd expect, a fire for effect for doing more damage than hit points to his own vehicle, a bruise medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got 13. He got a knife for a knife because he took out the VK and the VK took out him with their first shot. And he also got a Pascucci's medal for killing both enemy RT in the game. A Radley Waters medal for killing eight enemy vehicles. Yes, he did get eight exactly. A high caliber for dealing the most damage in the game. And a top gun for getting at least six kills. And sadly, unfortunately, it was a defeat. Very much similar circumstances to the uh, win by uh, I Need Coffee Dude the other day where he managed to cap out and then got killed virtually immediately afterwards. For a second, I thought he might have interrupted the cap in time, but no, it wasn't to be. He did have to go in straight away, made himself exposed to that VK, who was able to put an 88mm round into him, and he fired a 75mm back. Both were accurate, both passed each other in the air, and unfortunately they both got wiped out, but the VK had already won the game. So let's have a look at team score. Well, not surprising, he got the highest damage in the game with 3,658 hit points of damage. Second highest damage was the VK with 3,512. Very, very close indeed. The third highest damage in the game went to the T43 on his own team with 1,976. When it came to kills, well, he won that one as well with eight kills. The VK managed six, so he got a top gun out of that. And four kills went to the T43 on the enemy team. And when it came to base XP, yes, he didn't win that one. The VK got that one for 1,336. Uh, again, oh, the only player on his team to get over 1,000 base on the game, so he did perform exceptionally well. But Beer Waller also was over 1,000. He got 1,088 out of that one. So yet again, the best player on the team, it really excelling with his machine, but sadly was beaten by the cap and uh, the enemy team being, or the enemy player being uh, just as much on the ball as he was in that game. And so he got two out of three in that one, whilst the VK got uh, one out of three, but he got the game, he got the win. So let's have a look at detail. He fired 59 rounds. You know what that means? He had one round left in the magazine when he got blown up. Just one round. That's all he had at the end of that game. 
He got 42 direct hits on the enemy and 32 penetrations. Damage of 3,658 hit points of damage, of which 2,377, the majority at long distance, at over 300 meters. He received five hits from the enemy, all five penetrators. You probably know the E25 doesn't have much in the way of armor, so just about anything that hits it, it's either going to go through or it's going to hit the tracks. And if it does hit the tracks, it might actually um, uh, cause no damage because it's um, um, Shakhtar Lovework, it's interleaving road wheels. He did get one hit by way of splash. The enemy RT did get close to him on at least one occasion. And he spotted four enemy vehicles, damaged 10, killed eight. Uh, so you could say close to a pools. And 1,001 hit points of spotting assistance in that game. Now, he earned 1,791 uh, credits from the game. And that was mainly down to the fact that he did half and half on his ammunition in premium. And that premium rounds are expensive. So you can see he had big ammo costs. And that stripped away all his profit at the end of the game. But he did come away with 3,020 experience points after all. And I think anyone who looked at that game would say, well, damn fine game. Beerwaller really played that E25 better than most other people can play it. So absolutely excellent game. Sad about the result. Incredible result. But uh, yes, it happened. Wow. So I do apologize for being late with this replay, Beerwaller. It was in my list to be done. In fact, it's not the only E25 replay I actually have to do. And there is going to be another one coming up very shortly. Um, so uh, I hope you enjoyed that replay. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.